So the Pixel 6a from Google is finally here and they didn't add 5G to the name since we already know it has that. Luckily Google was kind enough to send this over to review on the channel. Hashtag gift from Google. The color I have here is charcoal which is a darker gray color. Lighter gray there above the black camera bar. It also comes in sage and chalk as well. Right now you can get the Pixel Buds A series for free if you pre-order this phone and they've got some pretty good trade-in deals you may want to consider as well. Inside the box, you get a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. You've also got a USB-C to USB-A adapter for switching from another phone, safety and warranty information, and of course, a quick start guide. But no charging brick with this one. As you can see, the look on the back is very similar to the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, just slightly different. And it's a nice upgrade from the Pixel 5a, in my opinion. You've got glass there on the back, although you're not gonna get wireless charging on this one. You can see where everything is located there on the front, volume and power buttons on the right hand side, SIM card slot on the left, uh, no expandable storage, but the SIM card slot is there on the left, charging port and speaker there on the bottom. You've also got a built in fingerprint scanner there on the front, similar to the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. I haven't had a chance to test the battery life on this, but you'll have to tune in to some of my comparisons coming this week and see how it stacks up against the competition. You get a little bit smaller, 6.1 inch OLED flat screen on this one, 2400 by 1080 resolution, which is going to put it right below the Pixel 5a and Galaxy A53 5G as far as the size goes, but then obviously bigger than the iPhone 8, I mean SE. Just about the right size for me I would say. I know some people are a little upset that this phone only is 60hz refresh rate. Just keep in mind there's other phones out there that are 60hz that cost twice the amount as this one, like the iPhone 13. So for me, that's not really a big deal. Nice thing is you can watch YouTube videos at upscaled 4K resolution or 2160p full HD playback on apps like Netflix. And to me, everything looks really nice on this display. Whether you're gaming, watching movies or shows, just browsing online, there is a little bit bigger bezel there on the bottom, which may bother some people, but for me, I'm okay with that. One thing I don't like about the software, they're now making the Google Assistant pop up when you hit the power button. I guess trying to be like Samsung or Apple. Luckily, you can go in and change that in the settings. And then it comes with Android 12 right out of the box. If you're used to other Pixel phones that have been updated with Android 12, this one's gonna be very familiar. Swiping left to the home screen, you've got the Google Discover newsfeed. You can also adjust the accent colors with the home screen, just like on the Pixel 6 or 6 Pro. Sure, the fingerprint scanner could be a little bit faster in my opinion, but if you're going with an Android phone and haven't used a Pixel phone yet. This is probably my favorite software to use right now. Everything's nice and smooth. It just looks really good on this phone. Pull down anywhere on the home screen to get the notification shade. You're going to get most of your basic stuff like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, do not disturb, alarm, airplane mode, auto rotate, controls for your Google smart home products. You're also going to get battery saver, screencast, screen record, and nearby share. Mic access, dark theme, and camera access are all right there. Also, so, and if that's not enough, just hit the little pencil there in the corner uh, and you can add about 10 other shortcuts. Now, for some reason, I can't download the Geekbench app on here. I'm guessing it has to be updated, but just moving around the software, everything feels nice and snappy. You get 128 gigabytes of storage, six gigabytes of RAM, and you're gonna get the Google Tensor chip that's in the more expensive Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. And like I said, this one feels just as fast as those two. Now there is one area where you may notice the 60 Hertz refresh rate, and that's gonna be in some games that are a little more graphically intense, but that could just be that I'm looking for it. Playing Apex Legends Mobile, PUBG Mobile, and Asphalt 9, on here is a breeze. If you're into gaming and wondering if this phone can handle it, I'd almost bet that this phone can without too much issue. Sure, it gets a little warm, but nothing too serious. You don't get a headphone jack with this one, but the speakers on the bottom and by the earpiece are actually pretty nice in my opinion. Nice and loud with good clarity. Here's a quick audio test just to give you an idea of what they sound like.
Inside the app, you get features like night sight, portrait, panorama, photosphere, and Google Lens. You can also shoot video up to 4K resolution, 60 frames per second. And I tested that for about five minutes straight. It got a little warm, but didn't overheat or anything like that. Plus in the photo app, not only do you get the magic eraser, but you've also got a blur feature where you can take a regular photo and make it look like it was shot in portrait mode. On paper, the cameras don't seem as nice on this more budget friendly phone compared to its more expensive siblings. But once you start taking photos with it, you realize just how good Google is with their phone photography. Here's a few samples of photos and video I've got so far, but just keep in mind, this thing is impressive for what you're paying. Video's pretty smooth on here as well. And as far as photos go, this phone is tough to beat, even when comparing to more expensive phones. So hopefully this video gave you a little closer look at the new Pixel 6a. So far, I'm pretty impressed with what I'm seeing and I'll probably switch to this phone so that I can use it every day for a while. And of course, I'll be comparing it to some of the competition. So you'll definitely wanna look out for those videos coming up this week. <laughs> So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.